about your 90th birthday party. Huh? Your 90th birthday party. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have, I've had about eight 90th birthday parties now. <laughs> <laughs> you went to Bermuda uh, for a... With here and there. One was in Montana, one was here, and one was up in New York. <laughs> I like to cover the map as much as possible. All right. Why did you pick Montana? Well, because I have a house there. <laughs> All right. And I live there part-time. Right, right. Um, for some reason, rather, I... Uh, become fairly active in that community and mm -hmm. they thought it'd be nice if I'd have a birthday party. And now what about New York? What's your connection with New York? And New York was a, <laughs> the old family home where oh. I, I'm on the board of this thing called the Glenwood Center. Right. Uh, so and Henry Jordan they, 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 Everybody wants an excuse for a party, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can you talk about, you said New York was the family homestead. Uh, well, I grew up there. Yeah. I was born in the Bronx, in New York, in the family's home, which was called Glendor, mm -hmm. which is now called Wave Hill, mm -hmm. and there's a big horticultural garden, and that's where I started out. Was it a working farm, or what kind of that, farm? That was pretty much a sort of a summer resort type thing okay. from the family's house down on 38th Street in New York City. Ah. And was that the, the insurance? Your dad did insurance work then? What? The 38th Street in New York. Was your dad with the insurance company then? Uh, no, that, uh, I guess that's why he was in New York City, yeah. Okay. The New York Life Insurance Company was from New York. Right, right. It's being New York life insurance. <laughs> what do you remember when you were little about uh, things in the world around you? I mean, you grew up in New York and you had uh, a family. I grew up, grew up mostly at, Gl at Glenwood Farm, which is up in Cold Spring on the Hudson. And uh, not a very isolated life, actually. In the middle of 2,000 acres. And no neighbors. <laughs> right. And I went to school in New York City. Where'd you go to school? The Brearley School in New York. Really? Brearley, which is, there are two big women's schools in New York City, Chapin and Brearley. I went to Brearley, and most of the people I knew went to Chapin. <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember from Brearley? What I, was ran, I went to boarding school in Virginia where I was able to ride horseback, which was nice. That I liked. I think that was more important than what I was learning in class somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Had you ridden horses before you got there? Huh? Had you ridden horses before you got yes, to Virginia? Yes, I, mean, I had my own horse at the farm and mm -hmm. disappeared into the forest quite often. And that was about it. Hmm. So then, how did you, you got to Bennington College at some point. Yeah, I went to Bennington College because I didn't want to take any more languages. And they didn't say I had to take a language. That was in the days when everybody had to take language in college for some reason or other. And you had to have at least two years of language. You mean like but I had failed about six years of languages, so I didn't want to hear about languages again. And That's why I went to Bennington. Don't tell Bennington that. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't appreciate it. So you didn't want to take French or Spanish or anything like that, Latin, whatever? I ran away before. from all those things, yeah. Uh -huh. so what well, I failed them. I took them. Yeah. But I, I wasn't into languages. That's just it. <laughs> what were you into? And at Bennington, I ended up reading and, uh, about 50 books in Spanish because they were the only ones that were written about South American archaeology, which I would, had gotten into. Uh -huh. If you need it, you can do it, it says here. Uh -huh. So you ended up doing languages at Bennington by, by force uh, almost uh -huh. because you wanted the information. I, I, went from, I went to Bennington because I knew I could be a famous artist. Mm -hmm. I don't think you've ever seen any of my paintings. <laughs> I'm going to keep looking for them. <laughs> I slipped from art into graphic arts and then into architecture. And architecture became my major. So you wanted to be an architect. 
And, and you were at Benny's. Uh, yes, I thought that would be nice. The only female but architect in the I got world. sidetracked into getting married and having a batch of children that didn't work with an architecture career. Mm -hmm. So I started rehabbing old buildings. Uh. And that's where I sort of kept myself ever since, I think. Huh. What was the uh, attraction of the architecture career for you? Why do you think architecture resonated with you at Bennington? Well, Bennington, uh, what, what happens is when you're in college, uh, you don't g go to architectural school yet. Right. You do that afterwards. Some of us mm -hmm. slipped away from Bennington and wandered over to Harvard and got into their graduate school while we were undergraduates. Right. That wasn't too good. We were told to go home. <laughs> we didn't have enough foundations for them. Huh. But uh, it was a nice grounding for what I've done. Now, when you were at Bennington, you talked about Martha Graham. Excuse me? Martha Graham at Bennington? So you were trying to take dance classes? Well, Martha Graham class. spent one whole summer at Bennington when we went to school because the war had started and... We went through summer and we didn't do winter. And that's when they invented something called the winter period when we all went out and did things outside of school, which I think is very important to do. Mm -hmm. And no schools are doing that today. They are. And Bennington has a way of starting a lot of things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, Bennington has uh, been very much on the forefront. Yeah. Uh, huh. Now, all right, so architecture, you had a passel of kids. <laughs> How, you were in New York and you, you got married and lived in New York? Well, I, I sort of got around, I guess, between archaeology and architecture. And then I, I much prefer working with old, good buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, the newer ones don't stand up nearly as well as the old ones. And it's been, it's been interesting. But um, so the old buildings. You didn't really have a lot of old buildings in your childhood so much. Did you sort of fall in love with them in college? What? The old buildings. Was that more of a thing you fell in love with in college well, uh, from, from being a kid? The, our, the first professor we had was, was uh, a reconstruction architect. Mm -hmm. And then he sort of fed, fed us on the idea that the old buildings that are still standing are a lot better than the new ones that are not going to stand very long. Right. right. <laughs> And that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So were you in New York when you were trying to do some architecture work in Bennington? Where were you? Or did you get married and have a passel of kids? Uh, I got, when did I you got married? married halfway through college and wandered away. Oh, so you didn't yeah. finish college? No, I haven't graduated yet. You're still working on it? Yeah. <laughs> well, not too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you and your husband live in New York? Excuse me? When you got married, where did you live? Where did you live when you got married? Uh, with the Navy. Oh, really? <laughs> Florida, Pennsylvania, California, places like that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And you brought a passel of kids with you? No, no, I wanted everywhere. All right. And the Navy had a way of, they had inland bases, which I never understood. For the Navy. Chicago was fascinating. <laughs> huh. huh. So when you started to get more involved in architecture and then in history and in renovations, what kinds of projects or what kind of charities did you start to get involved with? Well, just everywhere I go, I, I see something historical. There are things everywhere. And, then, and somehow it just fascinates me hmm. that things can last that well and mm -hmm. be done that well. Yeah, yeah. Now, you mentioned Glenwood is one of the groups that you've done charitable work with. Glenwood, Bennington, what kinds of charities have you been involved with? Huh. <laughs> Ones that need their buildings repaired. <laughs> That's the easiest answer to that one. That's all of them. Uh, yeah. It seems to be something that most people neglect very easily. Mm. And uh, it's a shame that they do that because then they have to work twice as hard to get them back into shape. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And you think about some of these buildings uh, when they're mm-hmm. two and three, four hundred years old have been re- renewed over and over again, and yeah. sometimes at great cost. Right. Sometimes it ruins them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sometimes it improves them. Right. So to think long term oh. about improvements overall. Mm-hmm. Um, what kinds of things have you done with Bennington? Have you done building projects with Bennington College? Uh, yeah, we, uh, let's see. I've been responsible for working, building new dormitories. Uh, we, <laughs> it, it's sort of endless up there, mainly because there is a typical example of neglect. Mm-hmm. 75 years of neglect mm-hmm. on a campus is messy. And... Uh, I found myself with a vice president of the college who who sort of agreed with me, and we've had a great time doing it together. Sort of, I point the things out, and she figures it out how we get it done. Okay. It works out very well. Okay, so Bennington keeps coming back to you for more ideas because well, you know I've been on the board for thirty years. Now. Yeah. <laughs> that says something bad. I don't know what. <laughs> That's nobody else wants the job. <laughs> it's a hard job. <laughs> now, you were also on the board at Moore College of Art in Philadelphia. I'm still on the board down there, and there again. Uh, we needed more space. We looked at other buildings in town. We ended up being given a building, which costs more than buying one. But it works now. <laughs> what do you mean it costs more? Uh, something called abatement of whatever that stuff is. <laughs> oh, oh, you had to abate. Be- beginning with A, asbestos. Yes, asbestos yeah. abatement. So you uh, Two million dollars worth of remedial work mm. on one building, mm. and that's pretty sad. Yeah. So when you visit more College of Art, why do you care about more? You didn't go to school there. Well, I got to I just. See something wrong every time I go in. It's easy. <laughs> How did you find out uh, about that? We're trying out? to house a number of students that are more than the buildings should hold, mm-hmm. and trying to find space that where we can work. Uh, we tried renting buildings in the neighborhood that didn't work very well, mm-hmm. and finally, when we bought this building, <laughs> this famous building. Uh, we've been able to stay within our own space, and mm-hmm. but it's hard. Yeah. It's not easy. Mm. How did you find more? Uh, one of my children wanted to go to an art school, and we looked at Moore along with others, and she decided that's where she wanted to go. Mm. And she graduated from there. Okay. Uh, the gorgeous place. Now doesn't practice anything in the film. Well, she does do some art, but basically she's become a psychiatrist or a psychologist or something like that. <laughs> so she used her creativity in all kinds of ways. Huh? Lots of creativity. Yeah. 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 And she, use, she uses her artwork. She works, work, she works a great deal with the play therapy. Oh, yeah. Um, she said, she said it's, it's a background. <laughs> yeah. I think play therapy and psychology. Yeah. yeah. And with the art background uh, and creativity. Mm-hmm. Huh. They're lucky to have found you. Or you found them. <laughs> All right. Now, Sugartown. Sugartown. Sugartown just happened. It's called driving by. And when you drive by a building that started falling down five days a week, you say to yourself, I feel so sorry for that building. And that was how Sugartown actually started. Then I met n- new people who had just moved in across the street, and I said to them, if they ever, this building ever comes up for sale, let me know. So two years later, I got a phone call. And John Nagy said, <laughs> I'm ready, are you? <laughs> And he really led that, but uh, I think I started it. <laughs> <laughs> you got him off the ground. But we've been doing that for 30 years. It's been 30 years for Historic Sugartown? Yeah. Uh-huh. So what kinds of things have you done there? Uh, put it back together, I guess. <laughs> Why? Uh, yeah. 
And we also we moved one one lovely farmhouse that a nice developer was going to knock down, and he said we could have it. So we moved it three miles. That was exciting. Why do you Why do you want to have Sugartown be how it was? What? Why? Who, why? What, what's your vision? Why do you? Uh, it was a good, It was an almost complete example of what you call a crossroads village. And it had everything from the blacksmith shop to an inn to buildings and, and that that always been there. And they are, they are, most of them are still there. The blacksmith shop has disappeared. The inn is, a, of course, a house. And the other building, there, was, there are two, two schoolhouses right there. We own one of them or did own one of them. Uh, it just seemed like it's something that was missing. It wasn't a big mansion. It wasn't the earliest building in the world. I mean, it's basically 1800s, although several of the buildings date from the mid 1700s. Mm -hmm. uh, it just seemed that it was a shame to have it disappear. Mm -hmm. So we've been working on it, and I think we can, it, it, talking about the history of the area, it fits in with all these other things that happened in this area. Mm -hmm. And as an example of how people lived in the horses, horse and great buggy age. Right. We have buggies, too. <laughs> you do have buggies in the yeah. barn. They're a wonderful collection of them that belong to the History Association. Now, are you ever at Sugartown when the little kids come for school projects? The, the class trips? What do the kids think when they come to Sugartown? Are you there when the kids come for class trips? And yeah, the schools. You mean school trips? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's well. That's what it's really basically best for. What do you notice that the kids notice? What do the kids notice the most? When the, the kids, kids, what they, I, I really am not tied into that end of it. Oh, you don't see so it. So oh. I really don't know, except that the reports have always been very enthusiastic when they get there. And then there's historic Sugartown Day, the weekend. Uh -huh. And you go to that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty amazing. Can yeah, that's to... sort of fun. Mm hmm I get to see how it so, works. So uh, may, the main thing was to save the complex and hope that people will eventually use it the way we, we like to see it used. Yeah, yeah. But that's a little slow getting started, like everything else. <laughs> it takes its time. Now, John Nagy got it rolling. Well, John, John looked up every word of history he could find. As a matter of fact, he even did a book on just the local township, something like 60-some buildings that still exist. And then in one township, that's really amazing. And he did all of, all of history of them as, long, as well as Sugartown itself. Right. And, of course, the best fun was trying to figure out why it was Sugartown. Yeah, why was it Sugartown? <laughs> why was it Sugartown? Well, a lot of people thought it was Sugartown because there was a man that lived in the area called... What was his name? <laughs> I can't think of his name. Anyhow, he he uh, was a sugar baron, yeah. and that's what they, they uh, sort of decided that's why it was named Sugartown, but it, that wasn't true. There was the first settler in the village was a man by the name of Mr. Shugart. And he was the one that first settled there. And as I was there, it's Shugart Town. Shugart Town. Uh, ah, okay. That's just sort of fun. The real story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Shugart. Huh. But the, it's fun, fun uncovering these things. John also made a list of the accidents that happened at the crossroads as horses were being raced by bad children and things. <laughs> <laughs> so horse accidents yeah. and car accidents. Dump the cart and kill grandma there. <laughs> A lot of dead people. Really? Yeah. Oh, so, well, maybe seven or eight. <laughs> But for that area, that's a lot. Sure, yeah, it's all relative. Oh. Huh. Now, Sugartown has a new director, right? Heather? And what? Heather Reifer. Is she at Sugartown? And what? Heather Reifer, your director at Sugartown. Do you work with Heather? Uh, let me see. Yeah, I missed it. <laughs> Fassy. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Hefe Reifer has just taken over in this last year, and I think she's going to be a big asset to us. She's excited about it. That's good. Good. And uh, she's unearthed the fact that we not only have a collection of printing materials, but uh, apparently it's one of the biggest collections that's ever been seen. These are the, the stamps they use for stamping the leather bindings. And we have over 900 different stamps. And uh, several people have said, well, that's really outstanding. And it, that's, that may be something that we'll bring forward more as we learn more about it. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> neat, neat. Now, um, what about uh, Chester County Historical Society? The Chester County Historical Society in Westchester? Yeah. You've been involved with them too, right? Uh, uh, sort of, yeah. yeah. Mainly, I, I, I'm trying to do it with what I was telling you before about mm -hmm. trying to get the county together historically and maybe make a history trail or have a list of different kinds of things that each group is in promoting and, mm -hmm. and see if we can't make it more cohesive. There are quite a few things you've probably never heard of that are, people are working very hard on. There's probably about a hundred small historic yeah. houses and farms yeah. throughout the area. And they'll never get anywhere unless they know what the other one's doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that that's sort of my wish that people would get together as a unit, not, not just go off on their own all the time. For a history trail. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's called cooperation, I think. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been involved with the Historical Society in Westchester on their board? No. Oh. Uh, it, it was fairly active when I first moved here, mm -hmm. and then it disappeared just about. And I think now it has a chance of coming back with a vengeance, which would be great. Mm -hmm. Could be very exciting. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yeah. And you meet with Rob Lukens sometimes? What? With Rob? Rob Lukens? The other one. I know, it's my. I think I'm l losing my hearing again. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, I think he will. Be a tremendous help to us. Yeah, Rob's yeah. been there a couple yeah. of years now. He's doing well. Yeah, to all of us. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's working very hard on getting people excited, which is what they need to do. Good, good. Now, you also said for your birthday parties, you've had parties. We got New York. We got. You said also Montana. Yeah. Uh -huh. What about Montana? What's your why Montana? Well, why, why in Montana? Yeah, what's your, what's well, your interest? Well, I, I had a farm here, and we had horses and cows and sheep and God knows what else. <laughs> Ducks. <laughs> Name it. Uh, as the suburbs swallowed us here, the farm got sort of isolated, and uh, among other things, the kids came and broke the gates open, broke the, I had to have everything padlocked. And they got all the cows running down the Westchester Pike. It was rather nice. They can't, they can go fast on it. <laughs> so I gave up. <laughs> I gave up. Too many cows on Westchester And I was looking for a new place to go. And I looked around this area, and I suddenly realized that with all my children grown up, I could go anywhere I wanted in the whole world. And that's an awfully big plate to look at. So I didn't do that. <laughs> I looked at a railroad car with the idea that I could go anywhere and park my car, but it costs a lot of money to live in a freight yard, it says here. Oh. <laughs> so I gave that up. and. Talked to a friend one day who said, well, I we just bought a ranch in Montana. And you remember when you were a child, you always talked about being in Montana and having fun with horses. Why don't you come out to Montana? So I looked and I went. And then I said, 
That's not my full-time life. <laughs> okay, all right. So I'm stuck between the two, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so Montana draws you because there's more room for the horses. There's more, there's more the room. And they, they need a lot of boost, boosting in their history. Really? Well, because, you know, they, they're all still settlers. They're people that remember coming out in wagons still. Uh, but we're going to lose that if we don't watch it. So they're doing oral histories a lot, and they're doing collecting. One one group is trying to save every barn in Montana. That's not feasible, but that's okay. They're trying hard, and some of them are beautiful. Uh, the I'm trying to think who started the History Foundation. I guess one of the governors of the state uh, set up a basically as a state outfit, a foundation to boost history. And I'm not quite sure how I got caught up in it, but somehow somebody <laughs> heard something and I've ended up working with them for a long time. Mm -hmm. And they've been very slow getting underway, but they I think we've gone over the worst hump now. And I think we, we fit the newspapers, that's important. Okay. Uh, We've uh, actually been able to give out grants for the first time this past year. Good. And they were small, but they, everybody liked them. Yeah, get people so I, I, I have high hopes for that. Uh, there again, here's a whole state. Every town has its little museum. Some of them are wonderful. Some of them are pathetic. Some of them are hopeless. Yeah. But, as they get weeded out, there are artifacts that are worthwhile saving. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I guess maybe my grandson and I got into a bit of trouble because we heard that a town, a whole town was up for sale. And it was a mining town. And we could sort of grouse around with that, but the state helped themselves and they bought the town. And that's okay with me. <laughs> you didn't need to buy a whole but town. But it's a day. wonderful little town. And I think they're going to do all right with it eventually. It's, it's, it's still developing. But everything is in the development stage there. And it's fun to be in on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. Is it true that you and Betty Moran were going shopping one day, looking for some towns out there? Uh, well, Betty Bad, was out looking at some real estate because some of his children had moved out there. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so I, ha I had her and a couple of friends <laughs> stay with me. And we, yeah, we shopped around. <laughs> Did you find anything good? But the place that she's looking at near, near me was sort of on the railroad track, and she didn't like that idea. Mm -hmm. But... We had, a, we had a good time. I can picture the two of you shopping. <laughs> Most ladies go shopping for shoes, but you go shopping for all kinds of things. <laughs> That's sort of the way we went at it, yeah. <laughs> Did Betty ever find an apothecary that day? Huh? She wanted an apothecary, I heard. Yeah. Did she find her apothecary? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, with, with, in, in, in Virginia City, there is one. Yeah, there's a drugstore. Mm -hmm. uh, the Virginia City is fascinating because the man, a, 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 a person, had set it up. I mean, he brought some things in the town, and then he would hear of a Chinese laundry for sale in a town 500 miles away and bring it over. So he added, he added some pieces and a couple of very nice houses, but most of it's what was there, and. Uh, when the state took it over, they uh, were a little bit miffed. <laughs> and they did, they put blue tarps on most of the roofs and did the roofs first. And then, I mean, then they're working on basement. They've lost a lot of buildings, but there's, there's enough of the main street that's really fabulous. Hmm. To preserve it. And that, that's sort of what drew me into That's That's probably how I got into the foundation end of things there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because you love it so much, so they, and they found yeah. out and drew you in. Hmm. Well, the state wasn't quite clear how they were going to support this. It, it was <laughs> a little iffy yeah, at first, together. yeah. You're a uh, recipient of our Jordan Award 
for a long-standing commitment to philanthropic good works. Do you can, all. There you go, Jordan Award. What? The Jordan Award? What? Ah, let me write it down. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't help much, does it? Yeah. Ah. Oh. Yeah, that one. Well, that came as rather a surprise, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> to me, anyhow. Do you consider... I mean, I was just doing what I was doing every day. <laughs> so, it's an award for philanthropy. Uh, I've never thought about it, and that, you know, just happens, I guess. Yeah. So, you never considered yourself I mean, a if you can help something happen, that's fun. Okay. I guess that's basically it. Yeah. And that's why you do it? Well, that's what I'm hoping I'm doing, yeah. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun, and it's important so, to some you. Some things don't work out exactly as you plan it, you know. <laughs> but you still cry. Like you mostly. Cry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you try to get your kids and your grandkids involved in charities? Uh, some of them, yes. Mm -hmm. Some of them, not so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, Beth, the fourth one, spends all her time doing something like that. Uh, I don't know, what, 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 what do you consider a true philanthropist? But they, they, they have the idea, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you look at causes in the community, why do you decide to help? What? How do you make your decisions? Um, that's a nice question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I can answer that. Yeah. But I, I, I look at what a small amount could, would be a help, okay. or how much would be a help, right. or if it would help others to help. I think that's part of it, mm -hmm. is to get other people interested. And, mm -hmm. and that comes naturally to you. So then I ask you how you do that, see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's leadership gifts. Yeah. Uh, it's matching gifts. Yeah. It's uh, having a, a voice and talking about it. Mm hmm How about drawing in friends? Do you draw in friends? Do you let friends know what you do to get them involved? What? Huh? Do you get friends involved? Uh, less than I'd like to. I have less friends in now because mm -hmm. we're all older and we've given up. <laughs> <laughs> when the next yeah. generation <laughs> takes over. Uh-huh. Huh. huh. Ah, so then, you're, there you are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, West Town School. What? West Town School. Have you been? Oh, uh, West Town. Yeah, West, West Town uh, is sort of a sidewinder. Uh, it's I had my children went there, all of them at one point. Uh, I taught there for a while. What did you teach? An art and enjoyed it a lot, but when my youngest crawled out from under the desk, I thought maybe it was time to do something else. <laughs> but I, 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 I like West Town, and it's what it stands for. Mm -hmm. And there you are. <laughs> what does West Town stand for? It stands for being helpful and thoughtful, and that's about it. Okay. And, do you still do any artwork yourself? Do you paint? Uh, no. I threw it all away. <laughs> do you have anything here? Looked at buildings instead. All right. So you went from art to yeah. buildings. But you used to teach art. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Very so interesting. underneath it all, in spite of the fact that I put buildings first, I think my basic idea is to help find the right way to educate people. Because when they walk and in And that's a building. big subject. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I'll ever get the answer. <laughs> but oh, I can yeah. keep trying. But you're saying when you bring a building back, huh? when you bring a building back, you put people in it, and they get a uh, sense well, of Well, it's, it's, it's the idea of if you're going to get an education, you need to be taught something, and you have to be able to experiment with things. And all of it involves a building somewhere along the line, probably with a roof on it. And if you don't have that, it's very hard to collect things and do it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And that's, I think, the, the principle I work with is it sort of set the stage and then you can use it. I like and that. That's the only way I can describe it, anyway. <laughs> set the stage and yeah. then great things can happen. And I've chosen that route mainly because nobody else seems to want to do that kind of thing. Then it's much more fun to give out a scholarship or something like that, yeah. which is useful too, but you can't give out scholarships if you don't have a place to learn in. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of underneath it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what you've done is amazing because you get people to pay attention too. Yeah. 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 Huh. <laughs> this is Isn't it odd way to describe it? <laughs> well, you you bring to yeah. forward the needs. You put some leadership there. You put uh, some money there. People. Oh, you know, everybody's money. crying about the cost of education today. Mm -hmm. Among the, among them, I can do that too. But mm -hmm. I suddenly discovered what was making our education so expensive, and part of it is neglect of your premises, if you don't take care of it, it boosts it up a great deal. So do a little bit of repair now to avoid a lot later. Yeah, yeah. Like changing your oil on your car. Yeah. Pay me now or pay me a lot later. Well, it's, you know, the, one of the nail, the shoe was lost, one of the shoe, the horse was lost, and that's, that's it. Wait, say that again? <laughs> What's that again? One of a nail, the shoe was lost. The one of a shoe, the horse was lost. So it goes back to horses. <laughs> I like that. Can you describe that painting again so they can record Did you describe what you're it? Saying? Yeah. What um, is it? Tell, and then well, this is where, where actually the Harlem River comes off the Hudson there and goes around Manhattan down the East River. And the, that funny looking building is a brick kiln. And the Palisades are across the river and in New Jersey. <laughs> Who's the artist? It's quite a nice painting, really. Who painted it? Huh? Who painted it? I have no idea. I can't see it. If you can read it, you can read it. <laughs> I can't read it. I can't. Huh. Huh. Interesting. So who's behind us in, uh, over the piano? Those are my parents. Mm hmm They're done in pastel. What was your mom's name? Huh? What's your mom's name? What's her name? Her name was Carolina Marianne Clotilde. <laughs> <laughs> Carolina. Good, a good Victorian's collection. Carolina Marianne Clotilde. Clotilde? Her, her youngest sister had five first names. I can't say them. <laughs> <laughs> and what was your father's name? George. Just like the dog. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking boy. about you. Yes, we are. Good boy. <laughs> I'm not going to eat you. No, I'm not. Oh, my. No. <laughs> so that's your parents. Hmm. In the, in the 1930s? I was going to say 1930s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Do you remember them looking like that when you were a little child? Huh? That's how they looked when you were a little child. Huh? Mm-hmm. Huh. Beautiful. I love the orange dress and the color. Do you remember when they posed for those? Mm hmm Do you remember when they posed? I remember my mother... Picking out something to wear, that was the biggest problem. And I, I don't think I paid much attention to that kind of stuff for those days. Yeah. I can see her face in yours. You have her eyes. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I don't think so. That's sort of fun, though. Yeah, yeah. All right, and can you describe again what that is for us so they can put it on tape? Uh, <laughs> So that's the New York Life Insurance Company insignia. And that was given to my grandfather. And it comes with, it came with 24 punch cups, all with the four atlases holding up the world. It was really unbelievable. And my grandmother, I don't think, liked it very much. She kept it in the basement. No. 
And uh, then my brother-in-law said, oh, let's, <laughs> let's get rid of that before the IRS finds it because it's the only thing in the house that's worth anything. <laughs> so we gave it to Wave Hill. And Wave Hill said, after about 10 or 15 years, said, we don't know why we have this thing. We never use it. Well, well, is it okay if we put it up for auction? And so we said, well, it's yours, go ahead. So then I had a brainstorm of the 24 cups, there were 23 great-grandchildren. So I thought, we'd make little boxes and give each one a cup. But in order to buy it back at the auction, I sort of lost my head a little bit, but then I meant I could give some money to Wave Hill. <laughs> <laughs> so now I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> That's a beautiful story. But I did not put it in my basement. <laughs> so well, actually, all the room. ivories that are in the dining room, mm -hmm. that was a big collection my grandmother also kept in the basement because it had been collected by my grandfather's brother. And when my grandfather's brother needed some funds, my grandfather bought the ivories from him. <laughs> I guess my grandmother didn't like the brother, so anyhow, they were in the basement. <laughs> so you keep family heirlooms intact by bartering it's, and it's, it's interesting to see what happens. <laughs> oh, I think we better make sure we find out what those look like. <laughs> That's just incredible. It really is. Amazing. <laughs> Oh, you had that quote before about the horse we need you to say again. Uh -huh. Remember the quote you said before about the nail and the horseshoe? Uh -huh. Yeah, you should repeat that again so they can get the voice on tape now that the sound is gone. What were we talking about on that for the, um, the want of a, what was that, Penny? I couldn't remember what the quote was. A nail and a shoe? Mm -hmm. right. All right, then I'll get over. But my grandfather did nice things like, the Palisades were being mined for rock to put on highways. So he made up his mind that that shouldn't happen and managed to cajole some very influential people into buying up the Palisades. <laughs> yes. And I think it's nice he saved them. But unfortunately today, there's so many trees that have grown up, you don't see them as well. You're right, you don't, but they're there. You know the Palisades oh. are there. Oh. Well, that was quite a project, yeah. And he did that with the Rockefellers too, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. What was the quote you said before about the horse and the nail? Oh, this is it, it's some famous poet wrote that. What was it? For want of a nail, a shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. And that's only three lines out of a big long poem. <laughs> I think we got it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I like it. I can't remember who wrote the poem. Oh, that's we can terrible. look that up. Don't worry. I'll, I'll write you a letter when I find it. Okay. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, it does. And it describes a lot of your philanthropy, oh. too. <laughs> so from there, from the Palisades, mm -hmm. my grandfather then got involved with saving Bear Mountain Park. Oh, yes. Uh, that was supposed to be a, 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 a prison. Yeah, yeah. It had been an army base. And it was right next to West Point. So you saw your grandfather saving up lands. So then, so then when they collected the ground, they made a park out of it. It was all my grandfather's hard work. And he, it, it's run by an interstate commission, and he headed that up until he died. And then my father was head of it until after the Second World War. Uh, then my mother was, and then my brother was, and I don't live in New York State, so I couldn't be. <laughs> but my sister was, too. Okay. What was your grandfather's name? George W. Perkins. So your grandfather would save up all the land. What? Your grandfather preserved all the land. Yeah. And you preserve? 
the building. The, I'm not, I'm, you know, the Bear Mountain Inn has just been refurbished. And I just came in as a consultant, but I didn't, I didn't work very hard on that. I did a good job. <laughs> it's one of those, mm -hmm. like, those big inns in the big national parks. It's the same type of building. Yeah. Ugly, but wonderful. Right. Huge. Uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're saving. Huh. So they've just refurbished that. I hope it works out. Mm. That's good. I think we had a good interview. Uh. I think you did good. So I now what you, what you have to do, huh? I think you did a great job. I don't. I think we paid no attention to it. But it worked. That's okay. Throw it away. <laughs>